What's going on guys? In this tutorial series, I'm going to be showing you how I created this top-down shooter using Pygame. And I'll be showing you how I implemented things like the sounds that you're hearing, um, the animations. So this enemy uh, has a small animation when he's running towards me. Um, and when I'm further away, he also has a roaming animation. And there's also another enemy. So let me try and find the other type. Like over here. Uh, when I'm far away from this enemy, he's just uh, throwing that little skull up and down. But when I'm close to him, he um, has a different animation. They also have death animations as well. So let me kill this enemy here. And yeah, there's a little animation that plays. I'll also be showing you how I created this map. Um, as well as the UI elements. So basically everything here at the top. And also the menu. So let me just um, die so I can show you the menu. So there's a little countdown between each wave and let me just go and die. So here we go. Here's the menu. So it just says game over. It shows us how many enemies we've killed, uh, how many coins we collected and our score. And if I press P then we can play again and it just restarts from wave one. Here's how the project is set up. So I have two files, one called topdownshooter.py and another one called settings.py and both are empty at the moment. And I have um, some assets. So to find these assets, just go and look in the description and I'll leave a link to the assets so you can download them and just make sure you put them in the same folder as your code. The first thing I want to do is import Pygame. I'm going to import a few things so I'll type from sys import exit import math and from settings import asterisk. So we're going to be using uh, the exit um, function from sys just to close our program later on. I'm also going to be using the math module and this last line means that we're going to import everything from our settings file. So currently our settings file is completely empty but we will be adding stuff to that later on. Next we want to initialize Pygame. So Pygame.init and the first thing I want to do is create our window. So I'll add a comment here called creating the window and I'll type screen equals pygame dot display dot set underscore mode and inside here I'm going to pass a tuple of the width and the height of the window so I'll just type in width and height for now and I need to declare these variables in my settings file so I'll go to my settings and I'll just create a section called game setup and I'll type width equals 1280 and height equals 720 I'm also going to create a caption for our window. So I'll type pygame.display.set underscore caption. I'm going to call this top down shooter, but you can call this whatever you like. And next I'm going to create a clock. So clock equals pygame.time.clock. And the second clock is with a capital C. Um, and what this is going to be used for is controlling the frame rate. So we want to run at a consistent frame, frame rate of 60 FPS. So actually let's go to our settings file and we'll just create a variable called FPS and we'll be using this later and I'm going to set this to 60 for now. So if I run the program now, let's see what happens. So we can see our program showing up for um, a very short amount of time and the reason is because we don't have a loop which is constantly running. So I'm going to create a while loop and I'll type while true. I'm going to type keys equals pygame.key.get underscore pressed and what this is doing is it's getting all the keys that the user is pressing so this includes keyboard keys as well as mouse keys and it stores it inside this variable called keys next I'm going to type for event in pygame.event.get so here we're just looping through all the events and an event is basically anything uh, that the user does which is interacting with the program so for example Closing the program by hitting the X at the top is an event. And let's actually add that in because Pygame by default does not have that functionality. So I'll just type in if event dot type double equals Pygame dot quit in caps. So this is checking if the user uh, hits the X button. And I just want to quit from the program and also exit. Okay, so if I run this program now, let's see what happens. So as you can see, we have our window and it has the caption top down shooter. And if I hit the X, it closes properly. The next thing we're going to do is try to display our background image instead of just a plain black background. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another section up here called loads images and I'll type background equals pygame.image.load and inside here I want to pass in the path of the file um, of the background image so for me it's inside um, the background folder and it's called back background.png so I'll just type background forward slash background.png and at the end I'm just going to type dot convert just to in, uh, improve the performance make sure all your images and assets and everything are in the same folder as your code it will be a lot easier for you to um, access the path okay so we have our background variable and the next thing we want to do is split this to the screen so down here in our while loop let's type screen dot blit and this takes two arguments uh, the first is the surface so I'll type in background and next I'm going to enter tuple with the coordinates 0 comma 0 so we want our background to start at the top left of the screen so we're not seeing it let's have a look at why oh yes I just forgot to update the display so underneath here I need to type in pygame.display.update and whilst we're here we can type clock dot tick and FPS so we set the FPS to 60 and if I run this again we can see our background is showing up but it's not covering the entire window so we need to scale it up and in order to do that we need to go back to our background um, variable and we're just going to wrap this whole thing in brackets so I'll hit shift and open brackets on my keyboard or you can just manually put the uh, brackets and I'm going to type pygame.transform dot scale and at the end I'm just going to type I'm going to put a comma and enter tuple width comma height so this is just going to scale it up to the size of our window so if I run this again we can see that our background is displaying across the entire window the next thing I want to do is create a class for my player so I'm going to type class player and inside the brackets I'll type in pygame.sprite.sprite .sprite, and the second sprite is with a capital S and this just means that we're inheriting from the sprite class and a sprite is basically any object in our game so for example our player is a sprite um, our enemies are going to be sprites as well as the items and we're going to be using this class because it has a lot of useful methods and we'll be using that later on inside this class I'm going to create a constructor so def underscore underscore init and it's just going to take in self and what we're going to do is we're going to call the parent classes constructor so the sprite class is constructor so how we do that is we type super dot underscore in it okay so next thing we want to do is create um, a variable for our player's image so self dot image we're going to load in this image so pygame dot image dot load and here we need to pass in the path for the image so for me it's player forward slash zero dot png and don't forget to type convert alpha at the end just to improve the performance the next thing we want to do is set up the starting position for our player so I'm going to create a variable called pause so self dot pause equals pygame dot math dot vector two and here we're just going to pass in an x and a y coordinate for the player's starting position and for now I'm just going to type in player underscore start underscore x and player underscore start underscore y and we need to set up these variables in our settings file so I'm going to go to my settings file and I'll just create a new section under the game setup here called player settings so I'll type player underscore start underscore x equals 400 so the x um, starting position will be 400 pixels across and for the y I'm going to set that to 500 so let's go back to our main file okay so now what we're going to do is create an instance of our player and see if we can see him on the screen so I'll just type in player so this is going to be a variable called player and we're going to create an instance of this class and now what I'm going to do I'm going to try to blit this to the screen so screen.blit player.image and player.pos so we're going to bit the, blit the player's image at this position that we set in our settings file 
And as you can see, we can see the player right there. The only issue now is that the player is quite large on the screen, so we need to scale him down. So to do that, let's go to our self.image variable that we created. And I'm just going to wrap this whole thing in brackets. And at the start, I'm going to type pygame.transform.rotozoom. And this takes three arguments. It takes the surface, it takes an angle that we want to rotate it at. And we don't really want to rotate this, so we're just going to put it at zero. And we're going to put the um, scale. So we want to scale it down, so I'll, I'll just put 0 0.35. And let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So you can play around with this and just get the player to be the right size. And if you want, you can um, create this variable in your uh, settings file. So I'll just call this player size and I'll go to my settings file and I'll just uh, put that there. So player size equals 0 0.35. The next thing we want to do is get the player to move around on the screen. So I'm going to create a function to do this in my player class. So def. Uh, user input and it will take self as its argument and what this function will do is it will check if the user hits W, A, S or D on their keyboard and it will affect the player's velocity. So I'm going to start by typing self dot velocity underscore x equals zero and self dot velocity underscore y equals zero. Next I want to check if any keys were pressed so keys equals pi game dot key dot get underscore pressed and I want to check each of the four uh, buttons, so W, A, S, or D. So for W, it will be if keys pi game dot k underscore W. And if the user hits W on their keyboard, then we will want to affect the vertical velocity. And we want to set this to a negative value because we're moving up. So um, let's just say minus 8. But I don't really want my values just to be appearing throughout the code. So I want to create a variable for my player speed. So I'll just create a variable up here. Self.speed equals player underscore speed. And in my settings file, I can create a new variable player underscore speed equals 8. So here I can replace um, the value 8 with the variable self.speed. And as a challenge for you, see if you can um, create three more if statements uh, for A, S, and D. Okay, so I'm just going to copy um, this if statement three more times. And I'm going to change this to S, this to D, and this to A. So if we're moving down, then we want to affect the vertical velocity, but we want it to be a positive value. And if we're moving right, then we want to affect the horizontal velocity. And we want it to be a positive value as well. And if we're moving left, we want to affect the horizontal velocity and we want it to be a negative value. The next thing I'm going to do is create a move method. So def move. And this will just take in uh, self as an argument. And I'm going to affect the player's position, so self.pause. And I'm just going to add on the velocity. So pygame.math.vector2. And inside the brackets, we're going to add the velocity, the horizontal velocity, so self.velocity underscore x and self.velocity underscore y. Let's create an update method. So I'll just define another method, update self. And inside here, we're going to call uh, the functions that we created earlier. So self. Um, dot player in uh, user input and self dot move and what we can do is we can call this update uh, function inside our main loop so over here let's type player dot update and let's see if our player is able to move around the screen so yeah we can move around and um, there is a slight issue so when we're moving horizontally and vertically, everything's working fine. But when you move diagonally, you can see that we're moving significantly faster. So let's see why this is happening. So to understand this, we need to do a little bit of math. So currently our horizontal velocity is going to be eight and our vertical velocity is eight as well. So to calculate the diagonal velocity, all we need to do is use Pythagoras. So we could do the square root of 8 squared plus 8 squared and if you put that in your calculator you get 8 root 2 um, and 
you can see that 8 root 2 is obviously larger than 8. So we need to make this value smaller so that it's the same, it's moving at the same speed uh, when we move diagonally and it's not moving faster. So to do that, we just need to uh, divide 8 root 2 by the square root of 2. And if we do that, then we just get 8. So now we just need to modify our user input function. And first thing we need to check is if the player is moving diagonally. So we can check this by typing if self.velocity underscore x is not equal to 0 and self.velocity underscore y is not equal to 0. So if this is true, then that means that the player is moving diagonally. As I explained earlier, we just need to divide the horizontal and vertical velocity by the square root of 2 to normalize this vector. So to do that, I'll type in self.velocity underscore x divided by uh, math dot square root of 2 and we just need to do the same thing for the vertical velocity let's run this and see if it works so now if we move diagonally we're not moving uh, any faster than if we are moving horizontally and vertically I'm going to leave it there for this part so in the next part we're going to be looking at how to implement uh, play rotations so the player should always face the mouse and we're also going to implement a uh, player shooting if you're following along with this series then please do let me know down in the comment section below and if you found it useful then please consider liking and subscribing and i'll see you in the next one